But uh, I was, uh, this week, I was uh, preparing and thinking about uh, my Mother's Day sermon, and so I turned on uh, Sports Center. Um, so, because mostly I was stuck, and I was, you know, I was kind of kind of not in the groove yet and was kind of wondering what happened in the sports the night before. And, and uh, But on came a story uh, featuring Bryce Harper. How many of you know who Bryce Harper is? Uh, Bryce Harper, he's a 24-year-old baseball player for the Washington Nationals. Uh, already in his career, he's been Rookie of the Year. He's the youngest player ever selected to the All-Star Game. He's led the league in home runs. He's been named MVP of the National League. He's kind of a big deal. And uh, they did a story on Bryce Harper on Sports Center, and then this came on. So he's an all-star for something not even baseball related. Go ahead and play the video, Isabel. Is the power of sports. Dear mom, happy Mother's Day to the best mother a son could ever ask for. I am truly blessed to have you as my mom. From the moment I was born and in those first days of my life, where things were touch and go, your love and beauty helped me overcome great obstacles. You've always encouraged me and supported my baseball dreams, all while never pushing me to do anything but to be a great person and to do what makes me happy. You showed me how to care, be humble, treat others with respect, and to always remember who I am. Every morning before school, my lunch was waiting with the symbols for I love you on the bag. And when we would all get home, you always made sure the smell of your cooking filled the house. Your actions for <clears throat> your actions for and the dedication to our family taught me unconditional love, selflessness, and sacrifice. One of the many things I love about you is your steadfast positivity. You always see the glass half full and make us all crack up with the jokes you can't make or the random things you say. I have to share my favorite memory of you and one that I've carried throughout life and into my career. One day you dropped me off in Aunt Teresa's and for some reason I jumped out of the car very quickly. As I hurried away, I forgot to give you my regular kiss on the cheek. You yelled, Price, Price. As I spun around, you flashed the universal sign, I love you. I will never forget that day. So of course, every time I cross home plate, after a home run, I make sure you know, I love you too. Sorry, Nashville fan, that's not for you. You held my hand as a child, but you'll hold my heart forever. I am so proud to be your son and so thankful to call you mom. Happy Mother's Day, I love you, Mondo. See, watching Sports Center isn't all that. <laughs> you know, I found myself uh, being moved to tears even that time. That's like the seventh time I've watched that video. I keep watching it, so maybe it won't. It'll just kind of, but it just keeps tearing at your heartstrings. And there's just something moving about a 24-year-old grown and famous man giving up respect and love his mother in such a public way. And, and in fact, Bryce Harper is giving us an example to follow with our own mothers as we seek to honor them today. And after watching this video, it got me to thinking, why is it so hard for us to tell our moms what they mean to us? Why do we find it so easy to make excuses or to put it off or, or just assume that they get the message, you know? It's one of those things where, well, I told you 10 years ago, so, you know, if something changes, I'll tell, I'll let you know. But 
Our moms are worth it, aren't they? I didn't hear a response. <laughs> Just one. Our moms are worth it. Yes, amen. 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 But following the example that Bryce Harper set forth in this video is not the only example that I want to follow when it comes to our mom. You know, we just came out of the seasons of Lent and the seasons of Easter, and, and we spent a great deal of time reading through the scriptures of the Easter story and listening to sermons and, and, and what Jesus did for us. But you know, one of the most overlooked scriptures of the entire Easter story involves Jesus and his mother. And you can find it very briefly in John chapter 19, verses 25 through 27. And it says this, it says, Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Now, can you imagine the pain and the suffering that Jesus was going through? This is as he's hanging on the cross. This is right before he utters the sentence, it is finished. Okay? So the, the, very, the very phrase before it is finished is Jesus telling uh, John to take care of his mother. He wants to make sure that she is treated in the way that she deserves. And he shows the world around them, him to, in that day and in our day, how important it is to love your mother. He says to John, he says and points to Mary, he says, here is your mother. And in the King James, I like it even better. He says to John, behold <coughs> your mother. We must follow the example of Jesus and behold our mothers, not just on this day, but in every day. Before we take a closer look at what this means, let's ask the Lord to, to bless our time and our mothers this morning. Lord, we thank you for today. And Lord, as we look into this brief amount of scripture, Lord, Lord, would you teach us what it means to behold our mothers, to lift them up, to look after them, to care for them. Lord, and would you place a burden on our hearts for our moms today. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. So the first thing that I see in the scriptures, the first thing that it means to behold your mother is to show your mother honor. To show your mother honor. When you look up the, the Greek word for behold, it simply means that you care for, that you take heed of, you show attention to another person or an object. So Jesus is telling John to look after his mother Mary when, when he is gone. But in so doing, Jesus is fulfilling his duty to behold his own mother and honoring back to the Ten Commandments where it says, honor your father and your mother. Jesus is making sure that even in his death, that his mother is honored. You see, the, the last time we hear of Joseph, you know, Jesus' father, is when around Jesus is age 12. And so from age 12 to about age 33, there's no mention of Joseph in the scriptures. And most, uh, most theologians agree that it's probably because Joseph had passed away in this time period. So sometime between the age of 12 and the age of 33 of Jesus' life, jo his father Joseph has probably passed away. And so, in the Jewish culture, if the husband passes away and the wife does not get remarried, then the, the duty of caring for the woman falls onto the oldest male child, which would be Jesus. Jesus is the oldest male child, and so he is now responsible for caring for Mary. It's his obligation, it's his, it's his duty to make sure that she receives the care and the honor and the dignity that's deserved. And so what does he do? Before Jesus leaves this earth, 
He makes sure he sets up someone to take care of her. You see, Jesus didn't just take this decision lightly because Jesus had half-brothers and half-sisters. Because we know that James is one of those and, and, and Jude is one of those. But he didn't just trust his, his brothers and sisters to take care of Mary because we know from John chapter 7 that his own brothers didn't get along with him. They thought he was crazy. They thought he had lost his mind. And so, and so he didn't trust them with this duty. Jesus also didn't pick another woman to burden with this because they were to be taken care of in this culture, not to take care of others. And so it didn't seem fair to ask a woman to fill this role. Now Jesus turns to the one that he has the most faith in, that he has the closest relationship with, the one that he trusts the most, the one that he called his beloved. He thought so highly of John, he said, you are my beloved. And so he left the job of caring for his mother to the one he trusted the most. So what are we doing to show honor to our mothers? Do we give them the very best we can? Are our words and actions something they would be proud of? Have we made arrangements for their care if something were to happen to us? These are all things that Jesus says and he has shown us that our mothers are worthy of. We need to honor them as we're commanded in Exodus and Deuteronomy and Ephesians all tell us to honor our father and our mothers. Even up to the point of death, we need to be looking out for them. So we need to show our mothers honor. Secondly, we need to show our mothers that we are care and are concerned about them. Did you ever wonder what the three most attended days of church are each year for the average church? Okay, for our church, it's Tractor Sunday, it's Christmas Eve, and it's Easter Sunday, okay? But I guess not every church has a Tractor Sunday. Okay, so we take that one off. And so coming in number three in the average church is Mother's Day. It seems that this day, there are enough of you that have enough concern for the wishes of your mother that you'll drag, drag yourself out of bed and come to church because your mom wants you there. Anybody ever been there? Yes, Mother, we will be there at church because we know that you want us there. And we don't mind spending time with her here and then going out to eat together. And, and even when her pleas can't seem to, to sometimes get us here any other time, on Mother's Day we feel the obligation to say, yes, yes, Mom, we will go to church because we know that it means something to you. Do you know what your mom wants and needs the most from you today? It's not a card or a gift, although you better get one of those. Or both. It's not lunch at a nice restaurant, although you better do that too. She doesn't even need to spend time with you, although it's nice. What mom needs the most today is a reminder that she matters to you. That you are concerned about her. That you care about her. Because moms, they put in a lot of sacrifices. They put in work and love and trips to school and trips to ball practice and running you here and running you there. They put all of this, this time and effort into it. And she wants to know that that, all that work is paid off from time to time. And that you are a good kid and that you care and have manners and you still care about her to this day. They need to be told thank you and shown that all of their hard work has paid off. And the way you do that is by being a kind and compassionate person to her, not just on Mother's Day, but on every day. You know, as I think about it, is it too much to ask to call your mom once a week just to check up on her? How many mothers would like that from your kids? How many of you are like, one time isn't enough? I need to hear from them multiple times this week. There's a few of you. How many moms would like to receive a card or a note on a day other than Mother's Day? How many would that make your day? Yeah? How 
How many moms would like to hear from your child, hey mom, I prayed for you today? Or ask you, mom, what, what can I pray for you about? You see, these are the greatest gifts that you can give to a mother because you are showing them that they have done something right, that has been worth it because you have turned out to care for them. Show your mother your care and concern. And thirdly, show your mother love through your actions. You see, Jesus is getting ready to leave this world by dying on the cross, but he makes sure that someone is going to honor and care for his mom after he's gone. And, and John, his beloved disciple, takes on the role without hesitation. Even though John has his own mother to take care of. You know those, that, those list of women that are there with Mary, the mother of Jesus? Also the mother of John is in that group of women. Apparently her husband, something has happened to him as well. And so John is already taking care of his own mother. And then look at what John does. John takes Mary into his own home and cares for her. John doesn't make a promise to Jesus and then not come through. And John doesn't give Mary the dreaded line, well, if you need anything, just give me a call. He puts his, his words into action and he takes Mary in, by, in his arm, he puts his arm around her and says, you come home with me, Mom. So many times we say that we're concerned for someone and we offer to pray for them, we offer to help if they ever need it, and we do this with the best of intentions. But John is saying words are not nearly enough. He was going to look after Mary as if she were his own mother. And what better way to do that than to have her come and live with you? This way he would know the concerns and the troubles that she would have each day. So what are you doing to show your mother love? Not just today, but every day. You know, they love hearing you say, I love you. And just to get it out of the way, Mom, I love you. Thank you for being my mom. So if I forget about it later, you've heard it at least once today. But you know, when they really come alive, is when they see your love move beyond words and into action. Do something for her. Let her see your love. She always put her love for you into action. I want you to think back. She wiped noses and tears and butts. She didn't like doing any of that. She cut crusts off bread. She cut the dippy egg out because her child didn't like the white part of the egg when he was little. She did laundry when you were more than capable of doing laundry yourself. She gave you the last $20 bill in her wallet on more than one occasion. Her actions were always backed with her love. What are you doing to repay that love? As I close, I was thinking of something that we all could do to show our moms our love, and I came across two ideas that I really liked. The first one has to do with our video. Write your mom a letter and thank her for what she means to you and what she's done for you. You might even read it to her. How many moms would like to receive that gift today? A couple of you. A couple of you, you're like, mine's too small yet, but someday. Or how about this? Come up with a list of 30 things that your wife or your mother has done for you or does for you and thank her for one each day for the next month. That's easy. Just look on the list and say, oh, today I've got to, I've got to tell my mom thank you for this. Jesus was hanging on a cross and he said, Mom, I need to find you someone to take care of. We often claim that the busyness of our lives keeps us from doing the things we want to. But none of us are hanging on a cross with only a few moments left. 
Let's behold our mothers, honor her, show concern for her, and do loving things for her. Isn't she worth it? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you today for all of the mothers who are here. Lord, I thank you for all of the wonderful children and grandchildren are here. And Lord, I pray that they would take to heart the message of loving their moms. Lord, may we honor them. May we show concern for them. And Lord, may our love for them move into action. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.